Um, do you guys want to get one computer to have the TED Talk handy so that you yes. can refer to it? Or no? I don't know. I'm just going to throw it out. That would be useful. I want to steal my chips again and you got them with surprise. I want my dad's back. Just to try and make money. It's giving them selling life jackets. Don't even work. They just do it. That's what happens to If they're selling a life jacket, the person who made it got scammed by the people who stole them, and people who stole them got scammed because they died. Aren't they just jackets? Yeah. Well, they're like blow up things. It just said warning. It does not prevent from warning. But what if they didn't read English? Well, still. We we scam them? The quest. No, but for real. Don't even talk about the question. What's the point of it? What's the point of the life jacket? I think. For for people who sell them to make money. Yeah, that makes sense. But then who would do that? Like, you know how if you look at a grocery store. All right, guys, we're in love with each other. Remember, race your hands. Thank you, Mason. Oops. <clears throat> like, wow, well, thank you for having all these. Well, for a humanitarian perspective, like, that's not right. It's kind of, it's almost like your fault for killing. I don't think it's I think that in any perspective, that isn't right. I think it's not right. Here, we'll just start off with the question. What's the purpose of a life jacket if it's not a life jacket? What is it for the But then, like, they're scamming. Yes, that's exactly the point. You guys are just dragging this on. No, we need to focus on the question. What's the question? What is our duty? Yes. Oh, never mind, it's 18 minutes for now. Anyways, one of the things we could do, one of the things we could do maybe is, we can maybe raise awareness for, like, you know how people usually do marches for like cancer awareness and whatnot? Oh, yeah. Like red red for red. red. Yeah, red for red. We could possibly do something for like refugees. I mean, because I mean, I didn't know what a refugee was until we like until like we started reading the book. We kept having conversations. Yeah, I didn't know it was, but I didn't know like it was an actual serious problem. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I thought it was just people like I don't have a home. I'm leaving. You like I. I knew some people would like cross the border and stuff like that, and I knew some people would do it like illegally, but I didn't know like, like here. I well, but I didn't know why, and I didn't know how bad it was. Yeah, this. Okay, now you um, You know how we raise like food drives and get like some people to check it down? Why don't we just like shift the focus to refugees and start donating to other things like the crash everywhere? And then we start seeing that. So I know that me and Kobe, while we were doing research, we found like these two websites that are actually like taking donations for refugees, which is Mercy Corps and uh, Karen. So I heard people say uh, they were liable. Another one yeah, they were save the children. Were. Some charity things. Sometimes you've got to be careful with those because they could just be like, oh, we're going to get this all here, but actually they're just going to take the money. Double like, scam. Yeah, but. I found those like buckets that when you put in the water. I guess awareness is something that we could do just like as yeah. individuals because I mean we're not like grown up adults so we don't have like a job to like donate money but we can easily we could say that and in some ways I definitely agree we could okay, like true. erase where it is. Maybe. We could implement a little tax for refugees. Because you know how there's like tax for alcohol and tax for tobacco, which is that people usually use because it makes addiction and whatnot. So the people buying it and so it helps raise the taxes and whatnot. And then that's helping the economy. But um, we could process like donate to other charities that are like that. Like Mercy Corps or something like that. But we could possibly like um, could possibly be, uh, influence like the. Um, the courts and whatnot to pass up all that there's some tax yeah. on yeah. things for refugees, for helping refugees, mm -hmm. or 
even like you know how all, everything like you buy has a tax. You could take like a percentage of that and put that. Uh, yeah, put that. I think like, but then like the I'm not sure what people will be against it. It'd be like sort of like you know how there's like this. I'm trying to remember what it was. Like this one thing where okay, I can't remember. It. Okay, yeah, but we could also lower the income tax for refugees because income tax is a thing and takes yeah. away a lot of money. Yeah. So well, if you were to lower that, they would earn more money because they're already being discriminated on for the job. Yeah. I was gonna say. So tax, tax. I'm pretty sure that tax is how they pay like the police and the firemen and the teachers. That's government. how they Yeah, but if they yeah. would take the tax and then they would like, just be like, oh, we're going to take away this, it also takes away from all the other persons. And in fairness, if, if what you said with raise, like raising taxes to get that tax for refugees, I'm not sure people would get yeah, yeah like, honestly, yeah. there have been like a ton of other bills that have tried to pass, and they usually yeah. don't try to raise taxes for like certain things. Right, because they don't. Because we have to influence our people. We have to spread the word. Like I said before, we can do a little march on refugees, and maybe they're influence people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
her um, and her sister, younger sister, only like two years old, all slashed up, and her brother died because of an attack um, from people that were actually against refugees. And so like they cut her up, and now she has a scar on her head, her, one of her hands like, like barely just being held by bears. And that's the thing. So people hurt them because they were against them. Yeah. 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 And people, people, no, no, no. But people, they just believe their opinions. Some people just will stick to their opinion. They don't care if there's any evidence to make it change. Then there are others who are like, oh yeah, well that evidence doesn't make sense. I'm going to think about that and see if that makes sense. The worst thing is I saw on it was, um, I actually checked the comments for it and it said, there was a person that commented like, oh, these refugees deserve to die because they're not part of our great nation. And I was just thinking, why? Why would someone think that? We, so me and my people were doing some research for, it was in the very beginning before we got into like the files of like the podcast. And we saw this thing, it was like Donald Trump Jr. said something about refugees and don't pull it over. And then they, they said like refugees and he compared them to I think poison skills. And then from 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 there, um, the, like brand Skittles, the owner of the company, for every single pack of Skittles that was sold, they would donate one dollar to like a refugee charity. And uh, and I just kind of thought like it's kind of funny how when what he was trying to do to make people feel bad or whatever he was trying to do with that almost backfired on him. Mm -hmm. It was like, so, for instance, Donald Trump is, there's like, I know that down at the board, there are people who are trying to get in illegally, but yet there are also other people who are trying to get in the right way. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he's just turning them on. Getting in the right way could take months, yeah. years. And yeah, like, right, it's like, the family has prepared a long journey over right there hoping that they can at least come to the states and try and do something to try and make them legal citizens. But yet, nope, they get there one second and then they have to leave. The thing is, I've been reading on that type of stuff because I was actually, uh, I was checking on my uh, little thing for a uh, website checklist, like the Freedom from Fake News. I was checking out uh, like what really happens at the southern border. And so, like, some of the things that actually happen, it's not that Mexicans are actually trying to, like, hurt people and actually trying to kill them all, like, kill all the Americans that are trying to keep the border safe, is that they're climbing over because they're, they're desperate. There's no food, there's no water, there's no game to hunt. The game is, like, animals that you can eat. Yeah, it's like, the desert. Yeah, like, there's basically no hunting. And then another thing is that there's um, sometimes police brutality and, like, the Border Patrol just shoots some random people. Or they beat down innocent Mexicans just uh, in their little tent, just for like being right there or whatnot. And the thing is, like, none of this even gets featured on the news. None of it. Like, not a single bit. Except for like the parts like when they think like when they're trying to make all of them look like they're horrible people because like for instance Kate's Law when like this one guy who was illegal and like he had been and so I like, ended up killing someone like not everyone is like that. Yeah, it's it's the thing. It's like there's so much good, but then when one thing is bad, then that kind of takes literally over all of the good. Yeah, like my cousin's friend, I was hanging out with him. So like he's getting judged at his school by his teachers, his friends, and even his principal because his dad like is in jail because um, he was like. Um, involved in like this huge crime thing and killed someone so that now his son is getting judged for it and like he's a great kid like um, me and my kids we were still doing research and there's the website and it said so for refugees who were trying to get in the right way it could take it, between like all the like initial scanning and the background checks interviews making sure they have like no kind of yeah that can take from 18 months to two years to complete. And then on top of that, if you're from a specific 11 countries, and they're not as high risk countries, you need to have an extra 90 day security check. Yeah. Think about how much stress for like two whole years to just be like, am I gonna get in, am I gonna live? Like, that's the 
Because you and Jared are talking about, oh, they have to go through the right way. The thing is, the sad thing is that even if they're trying to go the right way, most of them aren't even going to survive until the first year because of like the poor conditions that they live in. There's no health care, so if they get like a scratch, like just even a tiny scratch, and it just gets infected, that, that could be the end for them. And there's nothing they could run. Exactly. So like, even once you get in to the U.S., you're still, you're still kind of judged. And you still, your journey isn't over, you have to get a job. But then that's why there's the good thing with is like, there's charities, but you have to rely on those charities. You have to be like, the like one day those charities can just stop. And they can just fail. And then, and then that's, yeah. That's it. And then, you know, the thing is like, if you actually get in, right, like, you're not yet a U.S. citizen, all right, people don't have to respect you the same way so as other people. Most of the time, they don't even get jobs, sorry. Uh, Mexicans, if they make it in, they're probably just going to live the rest of their life homeless in the streets. Or if they do get a job, it's a very low pay one. If and that isn't enough to get a make rent. Yes. Well, the thing is, when you if you get in like legally, with the entire time that it takes, you after three months of living in the U.S. You can get you get like long term money to help pay for education, employment, like training, and um, I think there's one more thing that I can do. Yeah, healthcare. Yeah, so I was watching, I not watching, reading up this one thing on this one refugee camp where the healthcare was so bad. This one kid got scratch on his finger and he got infected. It's like the only way that they could help him was they had to cut off his hand. Like that's a way that you have to you have to affect infectness sometimes. If you're not able to take care of it and infects it starts to uh, deliver up through the body, you have to cut off that you have to cut off that body part. Yeah. And so that was that was the best they could do. And so had to go through pain and surgery for it. And like he didn't get like any pain stuff and you just have to go through it. And then the bad thing is, even if you do get the surgery, you're probably going to be in debt. You can't yeah. pay that off. Because, it's not your bills. Interest. because if you're even like a refugee, you're probably not, you probably don't have money. You're like, probably just living off five dollars a day, even one dollar. And the comment thing, like, I looked through the comments to see and like, this one guy said that he probably just, like, he deserved to get his entire arm cut off. After that, I just stopped. It was the third comment. I was like, I can't read this anymore. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're venturing off topic. We're supposed to be talking about what's our duty, but we're mostly talking about what other people have done and the conditions that they have to go through. Yeah, but our duty is mostly bringing awareness and just donating money. Because That's all we can do, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's not like everybody can just take a plane fly out to wherever the refugees are, take um, one, bring them home, care for them, and stuff like that. Like, that's just... It's expensive. That's expensive. There's, that's there's the adoption a, process uh, takes forever. Mm -hmm. But actually, to be real with you, no. Adoption no, it takes money. Money. Yeah. 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 An adult that comes to America, you have to get a visa, which also means that you have to prove that you're not taking away anyone else's job, but that's nearly impossible because, like, many people are still unemployed. Yeah. And the, the banks don't have the money to support you, even if you do get it. Like, the thing is, like, maybe some, like sometimes it's short, but it still costs a lot. And, like, with, with the visas, like, my, my coach is not a citizen so he has to go back and renew his visa and that's like a lot of money because he has to buy all the way back to england then complete all the documents then send it to the government have the government reapprove it then he has to pay visas actually cost money so you got to pay that then if you get accepted and you gotta fly all the way back, which is, more money, which is a lot of money. Like uh, in the U.S. flight, that's around fifteen thousand. No, it's not. It's not that. Much. No, it's like if you're gonna like sometimes. I've looked at I've looked at the prices. For instance, no, I know, but I've looked at the prices. They get up that high. But we're not traveling for business. <laughs> no, I'm just like saying. I've looked it up. Coach is like maybe seven hundred dollars. I've looked it up and like they get up pretty high. Honestly. 
Yeah. And the thing is, if, with airports, like, you, if you look at the specific ticket, then the airport place will get a, not a notification that you were looking at buying that ticket. Then they'll bump the cost up. Yeah. Which is kind of something that just makes it more challenging. I talk about that one day. In mm. class. It's class, I think. Yeah, if you're interested in doing something, the website will actually higher the price because it's probably going to buy it. Like the scam. Higher the price? That's what happened to my mom for my birthday present once. Like, off topic. Yeah. Anyways, we need to think of something else we can possibly do. There's already spreading the weird. Like, if, when you're older, yeah. you can just, like, if there's a refugee, you can just take them in. They like, take care of them. And sometimes, like, older. sometimes even with, with your time can help. Because if you take the time to go to a charity, there's so many ways that you can help. It's just people don't know. So I think awareness is the first step. Like, there's this one thing I used to do with my grandma. It's where you would, like, pack up these boxes, and then they would be sent off to refugees. Right. And so, like, it was this organization. I don't remember what it was called. I can't necessarily remember. Is it called FEMA? No, that's no, it wasn't that. I've done that before. That's not for refugees. No, it's not. It's just for, like, people in I know. countries. Yeah, I've done that before, but so I'm tr I can't remember the organization. But it's where um, me and my grandma would go to this place, and there would be like these other people, not a lot though, probably about maybe 50 to 100 people. They'd be packing up these boxes of like food, medical supplies, and stuff like that you would need, and send it off to refugee camps and like refugee areas. We'll try and discuss it. Another thing you can do is start volunteering when child labor laws don't apply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I had it's something to do, which is actually kind of sad. It's sad, but at the same time, it's really, it's, it's kind of good. good. Yeah. It's good because, I mean, if, if you think about it, we're still just kids. So the fact that we're doing something to help, like, something that's so big, is actually really good. Our generation could fix this problem. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a possibility. You know, possibility. So you try, right? Probably yeah. not. Try. Yeah. Still, like, if you think about it, these are huge. Like, there's not. I mean, there's no reason that they should be. There's no. I mean, there's differences, but, like, there's no. You're not different than. You're not worse than you're the Yeah. You're not worse than somebody else. You're a human. Let's go Sorry. Yeah, when I found the volunteering thing in Phoenix, it's called IRC, International Rescue Committee. Part of it. My dad used to work there. You can't work there. It's a volunteering place. Not work there. Vol volunteer. volunteer. Like every year. Yeah, you get to the volunteer place. I worked at a volunteer place, guys. Okay. Right, Sarah, I think your conversation is like three minutes. Okay. 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 I, yeah, I think they're pretty much done. Yeah. Well, then. What should I say? Actually, I don't remember what I said. Oh. I, I wonder like how many I wonder how many chairs like like not just like an exact but like it close to like a hundred or close to a thousand like one thousand or close to five thousand. Um, so I know that there are a lot of charities out there, just most of them like obviously gonna make most a raw of the lower level ones like, are not as reliable. Yeah, I'm just gonna make like a raw estimate. Half of them probably aren't honest. I, I'm not backing that up with evidence. I'm just guessing. That's the thing. Like, I feel like there's like two different perspectives. Like the human, the humanitarian, Man humanitarian. Yeah, thank you. Not that way. That I uh, like from what he said perspective, yeah. or like a greedy perspective. Because like I could feel like you could like or, or you could feel like well if all these people are coming in then like 
I might not have as good as a job or if all these people are coming in it might be like the gas might go up because so many people need to buy gas or like I don't want my paycheck being deducted yeah or I don't want my hometown to be like overcrowded because then like there will be too much traffic the taxes will go up exactly the taxes won't go up they'll stay the same but the land price like you said the like how how and then like from a humanitarian perspective like it would be like these are people they're like like he said in the talk they're not looking for like a new home they like a new home. whatever he said they're not going to make a better life they're going for their life yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I like like, live their, the rest of their life. And, like, it may be expensive, like I said before, but we can afford it. I mean, like, we spend, like... If you think about how much money we spent on this, not we, but politics, we spent on this election, they said it was the most expensive election that... And I was going to say, we could have used, like... Like the thirty-five thousand dollars, like it was probably more than that that they spent to just like donate. Yeah. You know, like you know how, for instance, what Dollar Tree was saying, how he has millions and millions of dollars and stuff like that. Like he's bragging about how much money he has. Like honestly, that's not right considering how like most people uh, military twenty trillion. Easy. But you guys gotta understand, rich people are rich for a reason. They're greedy. Like that's just. Them. They're not the only time that they ever give out money is when it affects them personally or helps somebody that they know. But I feel yeah. like I feel like that's not all rich people. I know like, like I know, no, like no, no. Bill and the Gates. Like, they're they're very rich people. They they just started giving out money because they were like, I need to give back. Yeah. Because that but that's super like that's super generous. Thing I said like before, we have the money. We spent nine, 598 billion dollars just on the military alone. Oh, that's what? Yeah, five, five hundred ninety. Yeah, can you Not only spent troops on board, two hundred twenty million dollars just for troops on board. Guys, uh, guys, up here. Two, ar- two articles. Just read the title. Trump spent two hundred mil, two hundred million on an election stunt. Wow. Guys, bring me your computers. I want to say if you guys have a nice job. 6.5 billion. So we have the money to make a new life. Wow. Yeah. I think we can kind of right. 220 million to send troops to the border. Over 20% wow. of the world. For that caravan. Yeah. Because I know. Like, you, and I, I wow. We, I the, really, Trump really doesn't want that caravan here. I, I read somewhere that the U.S. military, uh, for the government, it takes like 24% or something like that. We could yeah. reduce yeah. that. Yeah. 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 You yeah. could reduce it even like to 20 to like less yeah. to and survive. Would still be yeah. Yeah. And give that to them. Because, yeah. because yeah. we could yeah. use yeah. it like, yeah. let's just say, 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 let's just say,
Another thing, oh, I don't understand how the U.S. is testing high in GDP but of any country. It, it also doesn't, has it doesn't matter. the US biggest military, 20% of the world, um, can't spend over a billion They're human beings. Like, like, you're going to spend as much to throw a party for someone? Like, for instance, like, all these rituals, throwing, like, Expensive car parties, but well, they could be helping you. Know, you know, it's just waste. Like the government spends their tax, tax dollars where they see fit. And like right now, the, the army is where they want them. Like, refugees, they don't really see the benefits of refugees, so they see them as more of an issue rather than an yeah. annoyance. But honestly, yeah, with the refugees, they could like get jobs and help like the government help actually. The I was talking to Lana, like, what if we paid? What if we figured out the one thing that we could give to refugees that, well, that's not just like pure money, that, that, that could, that somehow they could take that and learn to survive on their own? Because remember how, remember, remember what one of the teachers said when they said, if you give somebody homeless a fish, they get a fish and they get a free meal. But if you give them a fishing rod and teach them how to fish, fish. 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 Man, a fish eats for a day. A teacher man fish, fish eats for life. Yeah, they, they have fish for a lifetime. So what if we kind of applied that to like refugees? If we gave them a job, they could pay the rent, they could like get food, they could get food and water. And like if you want to like live down in the woods like, where there there's plenty of game, give them a hunting set. Or you could just relocate them to the farm because they just can make food and they're money at the same time. Yeah.